So this is what AI does. It replace tasks. There are tasks that we do. Most jobs are a complex of different tasks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these tasks will go to the AI, but not necessarily the job. Okay. Because the job will shift and you'll have different tasks. Part of that strength is that I would actually maybe even expand this even broader. And people, and I welcome feedback on this. My claim would be that I don't think there's anybody in any field that's lost their job because of AI so far. Mm -hmm. There's tasks that have gone away, but not jobs. And a lot of the worry about this AI is what I call third person worry. They're saying, my job hobby, I'm not going to be replaced, but I can imagine some, somebody else, or maybe I can imagine my friend losing it, but, but I'm still waiting for someone to say, I lost my job. Mm -hmm. A real person with a real name who lost their job because of AI. And so far, I haven't. I've maybe even offer like a $200 bounty if you can tell me the name, specific person who lost their job because of AI of any sort. And it's because... Yeah, why take such a binary bet? I know you like these bets. <laughs> I would take the opposite side of that bet. <laughs> but please continue. Well, you can take it by giving a name. I just have to fire somebody. <laughs> and then I can take the $200. Well, no. You, you, but you're not the AI. That's what I'm saying. Because of AI. Well, I would have to replace them with AI. And then yes. I can blame it on AI. Right. Okay. <laughs> and you won't be able to do that right now. Okay. Let's take an example, if I may. Yes. Logo design. Yes. That is what somebody does day in, day out. Right. They so, design logos. Right. And I have gone to some of the logo designers, mm -hmm. AI logo. There are logo AI designers right now, and they're amazing. Mm -hmm. But here's the position, and this is my position, is that what we get from these AIs currently, right now, are universal personal interns. They're interns. They're doing the work of interns. UPIs. UPIs. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they're really amazing. But you have to check their work. Mm-hmm. It's embarrassing to release their work without improvement, the intern work. Yeah. So I've used these logo AI generators and I'll work with them over and over again. And this is what the artist will be doing. The artist is going to be working with their interns, generating all these possibilities, tweaking them. They're kind of like a director or conductor. Mm -hmm. They're managing the interns and they're not releasing the intern work unedited, unpolished, uncurated. And that's what their new tasks become, the artists. I'm not totally convinced. However, I think that will happen. But I, I do think some rank and file will perhaps need to find new jobs. At the very least, if someone has AI as the UPI, I would imagine if you have a brand design studio that focuses on logos with 30 employees, some of which are junior, there might be some shuffle. But we can go ahead. I mean, there's going to be a lot of art generated from these entities, these AIs. And I always want to say plural, always plural. There's not mm -hmm. one AI, there's sure. AIs, all different species. But most of that work is being used for Areas that are blank now, where there is no pictures, where there isn't anything. So I have, my assistant actually has for years woken up in the middle of the night to write her dreams down. Mm -hmm. And now she feeds those dreams into the AI and she illustrates them. And they're just amazing. There were no illustrations before. Now they're illustrations. Yep. I use them to generate images for my slides. There were no pictures before. Now there are pictures. So it's not like I'm replacing somebody. It's, it's not a zero I'm sum. I'm filling game. it in. Yeah. And by the way, there's about 30 million brand new, never seen before images generated every day with these image generators. 30 million. And I would say about maybe 95% or maybe 98% of them, there's an audience of one. Mm -hmm. It's for the pure pleasure of seeing this. It's like, it's like you would take a walk out into, the, into nature and just see a, a, a beautiful scene. It's like, I'm just enjoying this. This is why they're mostly being generated, yeah. the predominant number of them, just because they're beautiful. Okay, and so they weren't there before. That You could not have your own private museum of these really cool images. Maybe no one will ever see again. Yeah. 
Okay, and so that's what they're being mostly used for is filling in the blank spaces. And that's also true, again, of a lot of the other intern work. They may be writing things that nobody else but the boss sees. Yeah. Let's look at this a little more closely. So I will say just as a means of setting the table, I'm deeply, deeply interested in these tools, which is why and mm -hmm. the effects that they will have mm -hmm. on the creative economies, the economy period, broadly speaking, society. I think they're very underestimated. Yes. And I'd love to get your take on that in a bit. I've run AI art competitions related to some of the fiction that I put out and have been absolutely blown away. I also sympathize with some artists, say on ArtStation mm -hmm. or DeviantArt, who are part of the training set, right. who are popularly mimicked, right? Mm -hmm. So prompt, yada, 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 in the style right, of right. fill in the blank. And I can understand why these artists would be upset, feel mm. threatened, maybe be financially impacted. I imagine their commissioned work might be. How do you think that'll shake out? And I know, based on some of the conversations that we've had, that I believe your perspective is, if, if people are relevant, they're going to be copied anyway, mm -hmm. right? And if they're not, it doesn't really matter if they're in the training data, right. <laughs> something along those lines. So Picasso's influence is going to be seen all over the place, no matter what. Right. But how do you think this will shake out in the next handful of years? Because yeah. I understand why people would sure, have an aversion sure. as artists. I think there will be people, companies, who will make training sets. They're all opt-in in some capacity. Maybe most of it's sort of you know, already out of copyright. And they'll be sold as kind of greenwash, as ethical, you know, training sets, whatever it is. Fair trade AI and, artwork. And, exactly. And there could be a lot of them where people will use it, they'll train the things on their own work. Mm -hmm. and like, help me make more images in my style. I am doing some experience with that right exactly. now. Exactly. And there's going to be this ability over time to require less of a training set for right now, we can only way we train these is the more, the billions, the better. But human toddler can learn the difference between a cat and a dog just with 12 examples. Mm -hmm. And when we start to have more targeted like that, I think people will start to clamor to be included in the training set. What needs to happen for the AIs to require far right. fewer examples in these, these training data sets? We don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the short answer. Got it, but we suspect it's well, well, inevitable. We have existence proof because we have toddlers, toddlers, so many. But it may require, right now, there's kind of the brute force, these neural nets. Brute force meaning that they're very flat. And they didn't work in the beginning because they weren't big enough. And the bigger we make them, they seem to overcome a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. But it's really clear to most people that we can't get all the way to where we want to go just with these flat because these models basically they do one and a half things they do pattern recognition and pattern generation that's all they don't do symbolic logic inductive reasoning the current ones aren't capable of that irony tough irony and so it's just amazing that they have gone as far as they have and we keep expecting that they can't go any further but they keep surprising us but we're pretty sure that they can't go all the way. And, and the example I would use is like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a flat, the idea was a flat, it comes up from the bottom, it's bottom up. It's like, how far can you make a reliable encyclopedia just from the bottom up? Well, a lot farther than you would initially thought, but we also know that Wikipedia has succeeded because in recent years, there's been more top-down control of the editors. And you have to have, for ultimately what you want, a combination of mostly bottom up that's somewhat regulated by some top-down control, editorial control, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't really have in AI right now. We have just the bottom-up. It's very, very bottom-up. And there is just a suspicion looking at kind of the Santa Fe work on complex adaptive systems that you will want to have some top-down mm -hmm. governance to assist this bottom-up to get where you want to go.